Hey guys, welcome back. It's July. Sorry I missed last month. Things have been a little bit hectic for me, but today I'm going to have a special video for you guys. As some people probably know, I've been obsessed with D&D over the past year. I've become a dungeon master, been running a campaign that's been running uh, pretty much for almost eight months now. So what I'm gonna to describe today is I'm actually gonna describe how to build a dungeon. Now I'm not the end all be all when it comes to designing dungeons. There are plenty of resources out there that will tell you how to do it in a very different way. I'll list some of those resources below. Some of the best ones I listed in my Dungeon Master video. Now, to kind of help enforce what I do to build a dungeon, we're actually going to build a dungeon in this video. Uh, including drawing a map and what to fill it with. So let's get started. To start this out, whenever I'm thinking about a dungeon, I always look at the context in which the dungeon's going to be placed. This can be when you're preparing for a session that is gonna happen next week or one that's gonna happen down the road. You're gonna wanna look at where your players are in your campaign. If it's just a one-off, then you create the context that they're going to be in the dungeon. This context will kind of help create a goal as well. For the example that I'm going to give, because we don't have a campaign to draw context off of, I'm going to do it where a bunch of adventurers are just traveling down the road to another city. This context is easy. The adventurers are already doing something, and they're already together. So now you just have to create a hook to get them in. This hook more than likely is what their goal is going to be. Sometimes this hook can be mystery. Sometimes this is a specific goal. For what I'm going to do, a man on the side of the road is asking for help. He says his friends have been kidnapped by kobolds and that he would give you a reward if you could help him get them back. Sometimes this can be a good hook. Sometimes the players are more than willing to help. You add that reward at the end for those players who are more neutral and always ask, is there going to be a reward? This may not do as well for some of the evil campaigns as, well, evil characters are more likely to kill the man asking for help and say, eh, hey, screw your friends, they're fucked anyway. Or help and then kill him afterwards. You have to know your players in order to give them a good hook. The second thing, and this kind of goes along with context, is location. Location is really important when it comes to designing a dungeon because it'll give you some context as to what type of dungeon it's going to be. Are you in a forest? A desert? A city? These things will kind of help you build what the dungeon's actually going to be like. You have the hook, you have the context, you now have where the dungeon is located. Next is to start flushing it out. The third thing I do is I always look at the limitations. This is sometimes something you don't always have to consider as really you can explain just about anything. What this allows you to recognize though is what things you kind of have to explain. In my adventure hook, his friends were taken by kobolds, or at least that's what the man said. Now, this kind of gives the limitation to you of you have to either include kobolds or explain some reason as to why there aren't kobolds. The adventurers go into the dungeon and find it's full of bandits. These aren't kobolds. Why? Well, it turns out the man was lying to you just to walk you into a trap. This also helps you define the limitations of the actual dungeon itself. A lot of the times you'll have physical limitations, like you're building a castle. Well, when you make the outside of the castle, that limits you on what you put inside of it. Otherwise, the players are going to be a little bit confused as to, well, why does this room go further out this way when the outside of the, outside of the castle doesn't exactly show that? Some of these are much easier to explain as sometimes you can just say, well, magic. For the sake of the dungeon that I'm making here, we're just going to say that he's not lying and that his friends are actually captured by kobolds. The fourth thing to consider is what is the dungeon's actual purpose or what was its former purpose? This allows you to also build upon what the dungeon's going to look like. It may be a cave in a mountain, which is where we're going to put ours. But is there something else in the cave? Was there something there before? Is it possible that at the end of the cave it leads to an ancient dwarven ruin that used to be inhabited by dwarves? In which case, this will give you a lot of context when it comes to building specific rooms and figuring out what to actually put into the dungeon itself. I'm not gonna do anything too fancy for this video as I wanna keep this video a bit shorter. So really the dungeon is only gonna be a living space for the kobolds and to keep their prisoners. The fifth thing I consider before actually putting pencil to paper when building the dungeon is obstacles. What things are your 
player's going to come across that they're going to have to overcome. Now these don't have to be extremely detailed, as you'll get into that when you actually build the dungeon, but here's a few simple ones that I came up with for this dungeon. The first off is that this man is not lying, his friends were stolen by kobolds. So the first thing is that there are going to be kobolds in this dungeon. Second, because his friends are prisoners, there has to be some form of a lock. Um, in the case that I'm going to go with, I'm going to say a locked door. Basically just a prison cell. Because this is the kobolds' living space, I'm going to consider that they probably have their entryway trapped, that way they can keep out intruders. They're also going to have a leader, someone who kind of directs them. He may not be the best leader, and he may not be the most intelligent, but this is the one that they follow, or at least pretend to follow. So, now that we've got our basic ideas down for the type of dungeon that we're going to make, and the adventure that they're going to go on, we're actually going to now draw it out, keeping in mind all of the previous things that we had brought up. First of all, we know that this is going to be a home to kobolds and a place where they keep their prisoners. So we're going to want a couple different areas dedicated to them being able to live and defend their home. So... What we're going to start out with is one of our limitations, which is this is in a mountain. So here we're kind of drawing like the mountain edge. Now this will be our boundary for where our dungeon is. And we can have some things out here like a, a light walkway. Um, so I don't recommend people do these with pen. I am doing this only because it comes up much easier on camera. Um, I have like bushes or just snow piles. But here's a starting point for our dungeon. So we know that they are going to trap their entrance and we have to kind of come up with what kind of trap we want to do. Well, it can't be some trap that uh, they can't, the cobalts can't notice. So it's got to be something that if you know where it is, it will trip you up. So we're going to go ahead and continue this a bit in here. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a dotted line here. And this dotted line is going to be a tripwire. This tripwire, when tripped on, uh, will bring like one of those logs swinging down to hit whoever's in its path. Um, and I'm going to just make sure that I have a spot DC. And here, I'm going to come up with an arbitrary value, let's say 15. And a disabled DC, which I'm going to set around the same, but a little bit higher, so 17. So that way any player can attempt to spot it and disable it. Uh, for a lot of the values that I'm using and some of the encounters, I am basing on uh, the D&D 5th edition system. So... We'll want to continue this on. Um, I'm going to create a small side chamber here, like so. And this will be a guard post. Here I'm going to label where I'm going to put three cobalts. Where they're just kind of chilling. Here I'm going to put my legend. So there will be three kobolds kind of sitting in here guarding. So we will continue on. And I'm going to have this split off here. We're going to have two different ways you can go. Here I'm going to have a multi-chamber. Structure. Um, here is going to go off a bit more. We're going to create a room here. And then I'm going to split off one more way into kind of a much bigger chamber. So here, um, I've just created a basic map, Ca a simple cave system. Um, and here I might put like, here's a raised area. 
while keeping in mind uh, potential things that I can add in here. Um, like, for instance, this is where I want to put the prisoners. We'll put a door. So this will be where the prisoners are located. And then I'll have like small campfire, a few of them. And these will be where these kobolds sleep at night. Now I don't know how many are sleeping there, so I just kind of put an arbitrary number. Um, but this will kind of give the feel of, okay, so this is a living area and you might put some loot in some of these where this cobalt was keeping five copper pieces from his buddies. Uh, we'll have two cobalts kind of guarding here. Um, over here we'll have a storage area where... It's just some bags, some boxes, things of that nature, just to kind of fill up the room. Um, and if you wanted to have this stretch onto a further adventure, you could, or another possible like reward area, you could label these as branded with this, oops, branded with like this symbol, something like that. And then I'm going to put a chest here. And here we'll say uh, two health potions. Oop. This is why you really want to do this in pencil. Uh, we'll say 30 copper pieces, 100 silver pieces, and 30 gold pieces. Just some extra loot for them to find while they're here. Now in this big room, I'm gonna have this sort of like their recreation area almost. We'll have a few more campfires with some extra kobolds. And then up here we will have this winged kobold, which this will be the leader. Um, So here we made a kind of a rough sketch of some arbitrary cave. Um, there's one goal, which is they can get the prisoners, which they can easily walk in, find, oh, this is the way we want to go, find the prisoners and walk out. Or they could keep venturing in where they'll be rewarded here and they'll get into a big fight here. Um, and this will it'll also give them the opportunity of feeling good of, oh, we cleared kobolds out of this cave, so nobody will bother them anymore. Um, but you might want to add, like, there might be, like, a dice game that goes on here that they're just playing around with, and this winged kobold's just kind of looking out after them. Um, in the guard room, a few weapon racks of just some rusty weapons that they have. Uh, maybe a box just for some additional supplies and food. Um, another option you can have is, another thing you can do is to like, you see how I put bed rolls or bedding here? You can add more to accommodate for how many monsters you know are going to be in this dungeon that are a part of like this little group. And it's just little things like that that really make uh, some of these dungeon areas come alive like here. You can see well. This is clearly where they are storing their materials um, Here is where they sleep at night and they guard over these prisoners It may not be the smartest spot, but they're kobolds here. They're guarding the area So if this trap goes off, they'll rush in to attack whoever's coming in So you can see different areas and like here for this locked door. You can say uh an unlock DC of 15, but a break DC of 20. Just knowing how to give more options to your players. They could just break down the door. They could actually pick it open. They could use magic to get through the other side. Don't be afraid that your party doesn't have a rogue. 
because I on I guarantee that the brood of the party is going to just sit there and beat on that door till it breaks down. They'll find a way through. So this is the general way that I kind of go about actually drawing up a dungeon. So I hope this video has been educational for some people who've never designed a dungeon before. If you have any questions for me or anything that you'd like to add, please put them in the comments. I'd love to hear what your input is and possibly learn more. I have some more resources that you can find in the description of this video, so anyone looking for more information on this stuff can go out and find it. So, since that topic's out of the way, I will quickly get to some updates about myself. The past two months have been fairly busy for me. I've had to deal with some technical difficulties regarding recording for those guys, basically ending up replacing most of my computer. Recently, I started work on a podcast that we have planned. We've been planning, organizing, and recording some content for this upcoming podcast, and I have to thank my friend Annette for really keeping me sane through some of all of this. On top of that, this past month, my cat was put in the hospital and is now home, so that's good. Uh, he was suffering from hyperthyroidism and will probably be on medication for the rest of his life. So there's that that I have to add to my plate. And really, that's all the big stuff that I can talk about on camera right now. Uh, there's quite a few changes that are going to be going on in my life, and hopefully it won't affect too much of what's going on here. But if they do, I will make sure to let you all know. The best place that you'll be able to contact me is through Twitter or my email, which you can find in the description below. If there's any topic that you guys really want me to cover, please leave it in the comments and I'll try to cover it. For those of you who aren't aware, over on those guys, I am playing Dark Souls with my friend Bailey and my girlfriend Katie, who I have to thank Katie for keeping me sane and alive over these past couple of months. So yeah, if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you want to hear more from me. Hopefully I will get back to doing this just once every month, um, maybe more if I get enough interest in it, but for now, I'm sticking to one a month just to keep my schedule a little bit clear. But thank you guys for watching. See you next month.